Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Cristina Ruiz Martin, and I will present our research studying the spread of diseases using geographical data and irregular topologies with cell deaths. Let's start with the introduction. Understanding the spread of a disease is critical for decision makers. They need to know the behavior of the disease in order to make the decision to control its spread. The decision they make will be different if a disease is airborne or is transmitted using fomites. However, we need to take into account that there are many factors that affect how a disease is spread. The, the mortality rate, the measures that the government take, and so on. This is especially important for new diseases. Why? Because the data we have when a new disease appears is limited. Additionally, understanding how the disease uh, evolves changes frequently, and that requires frequent changes in the models we have to study the disease. That's why we need tools for rapid prototyping. We need tools that allow us to include the new data available and these changes in the understanding about the disease in the model. That's why in this paper, we propose a methodological approach for rapid prototyping based on cell deaths and irregular neighborhoods. In particular, we propose a parameterized disease spread model that is configurable with geographical data. Let's take a look at one of these disease spread models. In this case, we use a susceptible, infected, recovered, dead, and susceptible model. In this model, the population is divided in four categories, those that are susceptible to the disease, those that are, are infected, those that are dead, and those that recover. And we define equation how the population or the individuals move from one group to the other. And in this presentation, we will take a special look at how susceptible individuals move to infected. But before we do that, let's take a look at how geographical information has a say in this type of models. If we take a look at a map, we can see that we can have different geographical areas and the relationship between these geographical areas is not homogeneous. So how can we translate that into a model? We can model each geographical region as a cell space. For example, this region is cell one, this other region is cell two, and so on. And then we can establish the relationship between this region using neighborhood. So region one is neighbor of itself and region two. Region two is a neighbor of region three. And sometimes the relationship is not bidirectional. And if we think about continents and the current restriction, we may have a um, visitors from Canada that are allowed to go to the US, but not the other way around. So we can define that in this way. In other situations, the relationship between one geographical space and the other is stronger in one direction than in the other. So we can model that with irregular topologies. That means a cell space that does not have the same relationship in both directions and that not all the cells have the same type of name. So how do we include our disease spread model in this topology? Each cell, we have this model where we have individuals that are susceptible, are infected, are recovered, are under, and we will use the relationship between the cells to establish how susceptible population will move to infected. So to calculate, this ratio, the ratio of susceptible individuals that become infected, we will use the correlation factor between two cells. That means the influence that a cell has in, a, in another cell. So for example, if we take a look at cell four, we will calculate the people that get infected based on this correlation factor. So we, will, we can see that cell five has a large influence cell four also has a large influence, and cell three has a small influence. And we'll model that with this correlation factor. So we, we take into account the number of infected people in that cell, the virulence of the virus, the ratio of the population, and this correlation factor. So when we have defined everything, we have implemented this as a parameterized model in CATI. Why parameterized? Because 
this correlation factor, the population of every cell, the virulence, the mortality rate, and the recovery rate are parameters of the model. So let's take a look at a case study to see how can we use this model and our methodology to study the spread of a disease. In this case study, we have a geographical area with four regions, and this region has a different amount of people, and these regions are not homogeneously connected. We calculated the correlation factor based on how easily can people move from one region to the other. And we also define in our model the parameters of the disease. So with all these parameters, we load them into the model using a JSON file. So once we define our model, we said that it's parameterized. So all these parameters are provided to the model through a JSON file. Let's see how this JSON file looks like. The JSON file has two main sections, the default description of a cell where we define the default parameters and then region specific configuration patches to change those parameters that change in the different regions based on the default one. So for example, in the default one, we define the state with the amount of people in the cell, the ratio of susceptible individual, the ratio of infected individual in each of the phases, the ratio of recovered individuals in each of the phases, and the ratio of deceased individuals. And we also define in Go the configuration parameters of the disease. So the parameters we have here. And then in the region specific configuration patches, we define everything that is specific for the region. So for region one, we modify the state because in that region, the amount of susceptible individual is 99% and the ratio of infected individual is 1%. And we also define the neighborhoods. So for region one, the neighbors are region one and region three. And we set here the correlation factor. And to run different scenarios, the only thing we need to do is to modify these parameters. That's why we have provided a process that goes directly from geographical data to simulation results. So basically, in this geographical data, for this model, we will retrieve the population, the different neighborhoods, and we will use the geographical data to calculate this correlation factor. And to do that, we use our cell dev generator. That, it also takes the parameters of the disease and provide a JSON configuration file for the scenario. We read that JSON configuration file in our epidemic simulator, so, and we generate the simulation result. So let's take a look at the analysis that we can perform. For example, with the case study that we propose, we run the base scenario with the configuration parameters that we show in previous slides. The amount of infected people increase until we reach a peak, and then the number of infected people decrease. And everything is stable after day 25, more or less. And we can also see that every susceptible individual decrease until it gets to zero. So everybody is getting the disease. If we change the parameters and we study the same geographical area, but we increase the virulence rate, we can see here that the infections increase more rapidly. The P, it means the total number of people infected at the same time is higher than in the base scenario. And then the number of infected individual decreases. And the time it takes to get all the population infected is lower, around 15 days instead of 25 days. We can study more interesting scenarios where we have a lockdown and there is no people that disobeys the rule. These are just some examples of the analysis that we can do. But basically, we, what we have done in this research, the aim of the research was to propose a methodology for rapid prototyping of susceptible infected recovered type models based on cell deaths, irregular topologies, and implemented using cadmium simulator. The advantage of this methodology for rapid prototyping is that the model is parameterized, including the neighborhood of itself. So we can easily change the parameters and adapt them using geographical region. And for doing that, we only need to modify our configuration file, our JSON file. The implementation does not change. Also, with this methodology, 
when new information is available, we just need to modify the equation that define the model, and we need to implement this equation in our cell. The advantage of using cell depth and can is that changing the equation in the model is an easy task. Our future research will focus on exploiting these capabilities, including new information and changing the equations in the model, adding individual interactions among the population in a cell, and calibrating and validating the model using real data from CAD.